What's going on here? Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Black Ops 2 veteran difficulty video walkthrough. This is the final section to Time and Fate, and we're going to be doing some more Sniping 101 as we progress forward into this drug cartel mansion, manor, villa thing. And yeah, the, the sniper on this part is a godsend because it allows you to shoot a lot of people and just get rid of them as quick as you can. And because the enemies don't respawn, you can clear out everything without ever really being in any real danger, which is pretty damn awesome. But one thing I will say about this game is it's got some really good music, but I couldn't really find any for the, for the intro, so I just grabbed one from a cutscene, and it's not the part I wanted, which is a shame. I did try and get the soundtrack, and because I have to get this up so quickly, I can't be meticulous and get the section I, I, I would like to represent for the guide, but it'll have to do. It's just the nature of the beast. When you try and get something up fast, you know, sacrifices have to be made. And I've been thinking about some of the stuff I'm going to do with this game because there's a lot of content coming from Black Ops 2, uh, mainly because I enjoy the game and uh, it does well on my channel. There's a lot of people that, that subscribe to me exclusively for uh, Call of Duty commentaries. That's literally it. And... I've not really been satisfying those people because I haven't put that many up recently, mainly because Modern Warfare 3 uh, was a game that I generally played on my own and I don't enjoy multiplayer on my own all that often, except unless it's something special like Dark Souls. So I did have gameplays for it and I still have quite a lot stored up, but it was one of those things where there were so many projects and so many different things happening that I generally didn't put them up as frequently as I did Black Ops because I didn't play as frequently as I did Black Ops and I'm hoping I play a lot more of this one. And there's a part of me that blames the connection on Modern Warfare 3 but I have heard that this game is extremely connection based so I'm just hoping that my, my piss poor excuse for internet doesn't stop me from enjoying this fantastic game. And if it does, I'll probably just play a lot of combat training and play a lot of zombies instead. Uh, as far as videos that you can be expecting, uh, I'm going to be covering zombies quite extensively. I am going to be doing the challenges in the levels if I can. You know, I want to do a challenge series where there's an achievement for getting all the challenges in on all the campaign missions. I will cover each campaign mission, getting them all. Uh, I've said this without actually looking at the challenges, so if they're extremely difficult... Who knows, I might not end up doing it, <laughs> but fingers crossed, uh, it should be pretty fun to do and it should give you something interesting to watch. Because this game is not not the, the Call of Duty veteran of old, it really isn't, it's, it's a lot easier and I'm, I'm kind of stunned and I checked the forums before I played and a lot of people said the same thing, they did say it was going to be easier. But if you check day one on, on veteran forums, I say veteran forums, on Call of Duty forums, where veteran is a topic already, you generally have a million people bitching and saying they can't do it and they want a guide. And these are the same people that tried to do an area once, died, and then looked on the internet to try and find a solution. Which, uh, they are the people that, you know, fund a lot of my videos, because they're the ones that really need them, and I'm, I'm not taking anything away from somebody that does that, but... I just don't understand not trying. You know, I can understand trying for quite a while, getting frustrated and stopping, and then looking to see if there's some way of doing it better. But some people literally will die once and immediately look for a guide. And especially if they're trying to do it fast or trying to do it for achievements, because one thing achievements have definitely done is, is made people a lot more conscious of, of time and, and resource, which is a bit strange. Because everything is, is a race, everything's like, uh, why would I waste time doing this when I could be getting this? And That's a bit of a shame, but it is it is what it is. This sequence here, if you pick up the RPD from that room, you have a massive clip, excuse me, <clears throat> to deal massive damage to these guys. So, the one thing you need to be careful of is the cocaine in the room makes it really difficult to see. And as you push up, enemies do spawn. And the closer you are to an enemy, the faster he will kill you. It's just standard, you know, Call of Duty nonsense at that point. And also, there's a really rough spawn coming up here. Is that the opening that I'm looking at right now, as you push towards that, uh, there's doors to the left and the right, uh, or to the left and like an opening further on to the right where people come from. And 
I got full on surprised by a dude and I don't know how he didn't kill me because I turned on him and managed to, to get the upper hand. There's a crossfade there though so I do believe you probably won't see it. See? Yeah, because I already knew he was going to be there. And for anybody wondering why there's crossfades, it's literally all the sections that I could not get to link correctly in the editing. Uh, I've used a crossfade. and uh, It's a technique that I only use when it's too noticeable in a transition because I do believe if you crossfade too much uh, it just becomes super noticeable and there's something called subtlety in editing that not a lot of people understand and the whole point of editing is that you don't notice it and if there's a, a crossfade every 30 seconds you notice it and it really detracts from what you're watching I believe but just keep shooting people in the face keep wall banging because this is a fantastic gun for it and be careful of this corner when you go around this corner, I think there's two guys looking at you. Also, behind me, there's fire. Do not stand on the fire. There is no second chances with fire in this game. It just kills you. It's... I don't know. You could call it realistic, because fire burns, but it don't burn that good. That's like jet oil. Or jet fuel, should I say. There we go. Fire through some concrete. Kill that dude. Get to the... Ooh, took his arm off. Sorry, bro. I wonder if they've got that in the multiplayer, because that's one thing that World of War did really well with the dismemberment and stuff. And we don't need Gears of War, it doesn't need to be an insta-jib moment or anything, but it's always nice to, you know, to just get a little bit of visual feedback. But this sequence here, Woods goes nuts, so you want to be killing the dudes, as per normal. There's only about four guys to shoot. There's another one, two, two up on the balcony, one more to the right at the top of the stairs, and you'll notice he's already running, he's already well on his way. And this is effectively the end of the mission, so thanks for watching guys, and you take care now.